Hi and welcome back to Economic Say Level on YouTube. This video is going to look at equilibrium price. To understand the concepts in this video, you need to know about the factors of demand and the factors of supply. So if you want to go back and refresh yourselves for those, click on the links in the top right now. That will take you back to what those are all about and how they operate. So equilibrium price then occurs where demand and supply intersect. So where the demand curve hits the supply curve, where demand and supply are equal, then you get equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. On the graph on the left, there's the E there, which stands for the equilibrium, and the price at that level and the quantity at that level are the equilibrium price and quantity. This is also known as the market clearing price, and the market clearing price is where all of demand is met by all of the available supply. I've made a separate video on market clearing because it looks at excess demand and excess supply as well, and disequilibrium in markets. So if you want to watch that one, click on the link in the top right, and that'll take you into a bit more detail about what market clearing is. So we're going to look now at how equilibrium price changes. We'll firstly look at how it's changed through demand. So if you remember, the demand factors, such as changes in income, changes in population and so on, these are all going to be relevant now because they're going to shift the demand curve. And we're going to do a rise in demand first, and we'll just take income as our example. So we're going to have an increase in income, which will increase demand. When income rises, consumers can demand more goods and services because they're more affordable, their income will go further, and this will increase demand and shift it to the right. At the same time, there is an expansion up the supply curve, and this moves us from the e original equilibrium at E, at P and Q, to a new equilibrium level at E1 and P1 and Q1. And this is allowing the market to clear at a higher price because of increased demand for the good and or service. So suppliers will see that there is an increase in demand and upward pressure on prices, and as a consequence, they will increase their supply. So we move up the supply curve from E to E1 as shown now and the equilibrium price then changes so we've got a higher price a higher quantity and a new equilibrium at E1 the market has therefore cleared once again the converse is true if any of the factors of demand reduce. So in this case, let's say let's say population decreases in the country. We don't know what for what reason, but let's just say it does. Then fewer people will be around to purchase goods and services. And let's say it's the demand and supply for apples. So the demand for apples will fall. In this case, we move from the original equilibrium E at P and Q. But this time, because demand has shifted to the left, supply will contract. We'll move along the supply curve from E to E1. That represents a contraction. And we end up at a new equilibrium price at E1 and P1 and Q1. The market again has cleared here because the lower demand has reduced the price for the good. There are fewer suppliers willing to supply because now profits are going to be lower for suppliers. This disincentivizes supply and we move down the supply curve in the contraction there and arrive at a new equilibrium price of E1. Similarly, supply can also change. And again, this is due to all of the facts of supply. So let's take costs of production as changing here. So let's say we've got a decrease in the cost of production. That is going to increase the amount of supply. Suppliers can supply more product for the same budget that they had originally. If this is the case, supply curve will shift to the right. Prices are now lower. And this will incentivize consumers to go out and purchase more because now their limited income can buy more goods and services compared to before. So there will be an expansion of demand. We'll move down the demand curve from E to E1 to a new equilibrium price. We'll also arrive at a new equilibrium quantity Q1 as well as the new equilibrium price P1. So we've moved from the original equilibrium E and P and Q to E1, P1 and Q1 as a result of that change in supply. Again the converse is also true if let's say costs of production increased or bad weather destroyed part of the harvest as is currently being seen in Spain with iceberg lettuces and broccoli then the supply curve will shift to the left. If it shifts to the left that is going to lead to a contraction in demand. The shift to the left in supply will raise the price of the product. Some consumers will be priced out of the market. They will not be able to afford the product and therefore we contract up the demand curve from the original equilibrium of E to the new equilibrium price now of E1. So we move from E originally, which was price P and quantity Q, to E1, which is price P1 and quantity Q1. So there's a contraction of demand as a result of that and the market clears at that new equilibrium price. In the next video, we'll have a look at disequilibrium in markets and we'll look at the concepts of excess demand and excess supply. So click here now if that's what you want to go and watch and I'll see you in the next video.